Welcome back, everybody, to another episode of the Caravan of Garbage <laughs> show. Weird intro. I don't normally do it like that. You got very pretentious. <laughs> You're like, ooh, the Caravan of Garbage show. It's not a show. I mean, Ben and Lawrence who do the edit. They do a lot with a little. You know what I mean? Very much agree, yeah. Where this week we are wrapping up the matrix -logy. Should have used that episode one, don't you reckon? Yeah, yeah, but you know, sometimes inspiration only strikes too late, way too late. You know? <laughs> sure. Do you think inspiration has struck way too late in people leaving a like on this video for one, but secondly, mm. for the third Matrix film? Is it diminishing returns for you? How did you feel coming back to this? It's not too late to leave a like. People yep. should definitely leave a like. Mm -hmm. Look, I think this is a. I think the Matrix Revolutions is a decent capper to this trilogy, mm -hmm. but I do not think it has as many memorable action sequences as the first one or even Reloaded. Yeah, I, I would agree with that. It feels like a lot of the things they're doing, except for the 40 minute mech battle, which we'll talk to, they've done variations on it before. Like we yeah. get, you know, a Smith and Neo fight, but they're flying and they're in the rain. We get like a lobby scene, but everybody's upside down or whatever. Mm. But looking behind the scenes, like on that scene in particular, they're really like flipping people onto the roof. Like they yeah. tabled them up. Like I thought it was just like, ah, they blue scranded. They put them upside down or whatever. Turned the camera up. Turned perhaps. the camera upside down, but they, they did it for real. So maybe they did that thing where they lock the camera <laughs> and it looks like somebody's walking up a wall, but they're actually turning the whole thing. Oh, they call that the JGL corridor spin around. That's what they call it. Huh. Even before <laughs> JGL did it. That's right. Wow. They knew it was coming. Wow. Yeah, they planned that for decades in Hollywood. Wow. Well. They were like, boy, you're destined to do this. And he's like, what? I'm just a sitcom actor. I'm an alien or something. I don't know. You get in that corridor. We'll spin it. But going back to this it was always the one that I always looked back on and went, yeah, I don't know, whatever. But I, I don't know, man. I really like this. You know what? Going back to this, my first thought was the Matrix code turning into anything still gives me this huge thrill. Oh. Like when it turns into a city or yeah. a car or a man. Yeah. Or a or a moose. <laughs> <laughs> also, they even put the Matrix code in the raindrops at the end. Oh. You can see it on like an IMAX. Oh. But if you're watching this... What on... about an iMac? Mm, one maybe. Of the, the green one? <laughs> the green one, yeah. Uh, so one of the things I think didn't do this movie any favours was releasing this six months after the other one. I don't think it helped. Like they were going for Year of the Matrix. Yeah, yeah. I also think some of the marketing choices, like uh, this poster that Ben alerted me to of Hugo Weaving flying in the rain with lightning behind him. <laughs> I remember that one, yes. You see that one? Yeah. You know, I don't think everybody was as jazzed for this and that was reflected in the numbers. And in that meme, have you seen that meme? What's the meme? What's the, the, the audience members looking increasingly less and less excited over the movies? I'll show you the meme later. Can't wait to see it. Okay, great. Can't wait to watch it back in this video. <laughs> the famous men. Famous men. So obviously also the Oracle had to be recast. She passed. Uh, Passed away, yeah, the original act. Yeah, Gloria Foster passed away, was replaced with Mary Alice. Apparently, at first, they weren't going to acknowledge it, but I think that you can't do that. No, exactly. Just every, yeah. Everybody walks in the room and just goes, whatever, different person. Speaking of people walking in the room, mm -hmm. one of my favourite moments in the rewatch is the moment where Agent Smith goes to the Oracle's apartment, the yep. hundreds of Agent Smiths, and they all, like, bob their head identically under the beaded <laughs> curtain as they yeah, go into, right. a, into, a, into a lounge room. There's some great Agent Smith doubling stuff going on here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What I also thought was interesting about that scene and sequence is that Seraph mentions that he'd beaten Smith before. Yeah. And I just wonder, when did that happen? But that also speaks to the theory that we talked about uh, in the last episode, where potentially he was another version of the one. Yeah. Or, you know, maybe he's just, you know, like a rogue program who's just more powerful. Well, one of the Merovingians thugs yeah. mentions upon seeing him that he doesn't have his wings anymore. Mm. So perhaps he was a Seraph in the literal sense. Maybe he's from that wacky universe where everything was horrible and nightmarish and, ah, yeah, and, yeah. and Frankenstein all the time. Yeah. Remember the Matrix 3 Frankenstein all the time? <laughs> uh, and he was an actual, you know, angel with wings. So. Yeah. No, you might be right. I do wish, though, that we saw Agent Smith take over the little girl and then we just got a teeny tiny little Agent Smith <laughs> just running. You know, like little, little like pint-sized Ant-Man, yeah. you know what I mean? Like yeah, child-sized. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Anyway, as mentioned, I, I, I never really liked the mech fight, but this time around, and maybe it's just because I've been Im immersing myself in the world of the Matrix. Maybe it's because it starts at about the halfway mark of the movie mm. and it never ends. <laughs> it's still going. If you if you put it in a DVD player in 2005, <laughs> still going. <laughs> still watching just, it. You just, left, you just leave it in a room. It's still going. The mech fight's still going. Squids are still pouring in. 
Just people running in and reloading those things. <laughs> Nobody ever questioning why you wouldn't put a, a lid yep. over the over the mech suit. You some would. sort of helmet of some kind, a face shield. I don't like it. But that being said, like going back into this, I think it's really cool and like a technical marvel. And I'm still kind of like, I don't care about any of these people. I kind of like the commander. What the shit is going on over here? Yep. You know, the dude who's up front and he gets like his face like shredded. Mm -hmm. I kind of like that. I also, I guess, didn't mind. Like the kid kind of grows on me a bit when he's mm -hmm. like, I'm 16. I'm like, you're 24. But anyway, it's neither here nor there. I do like when he goes to... His you reverse line <laughs> to get into the military. <laughs> I, I, I did enjoy the bit where he's about to shoot the door open and he goes, Neo, I believe. And I just mm. thought, Neo doesn't even like you. <laughs> he doesn't think about you at all. Wow. Like, ever. Don't you think? Yeah, yeah. You'd be like, who's this guy? <laughs> but thanks, I guess. <laughs> Appreciate it. I can't believe also that they didn't have not only like one EMP to go off, mm -hmm. but then when everything shuts down and the squid's pouring again, just have another one ready to go. <laughs> mm. Just have a series of them. Retroactively. Makes me wonder why all the, uh, the the hovercraft didn't have big mech machine guns on them. Would have come point. in handy. Just have them out there. Big machine guns on them. Also, if you can set off an EMP yes. inside of a spaceship or whatever, mm. and it doesn't shut down the spaceship, surely you could rig up something similar for Zion, right? Where it doesn't shut down everybody's oxygen or whatever. Oh, great point. I make great points. <laughs> but I'm sure you've got a great point about this mech battle also. Here's one for you. I'll give you Go this on. one. <laughs> yeah. Just say this one's yours. Okay, great. Mason emailed me this, right? Uh, he said to me, though, it was cool how by the time the ship arrives to save the day, the whole color palette of the city has changed and it's just wrecked as shit. And oh. I really enjoyed that. That goes from like a kind of cool blue to just like, just it's just hell. Just red and dirty and smoke. And I did tell you that. Mm. And you said you didn't even notice that because <laughs> you're not very observant. That's what you said. You said, thank you for pointing that out. I've seen this movie so many times over decade, nearly two decades. <laughs> I didn't notice that at all. Why did I write this scenario? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I was doing you a favour. Yep. And you just fucking dug my head in the toilet. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Quite a lot of this movie is set in the real world. Unless you subscribe to the, it's a matrix within a matrix theory, mm -hmm. which, you know, who knows. But one of the moments that I really liked from this is the real world fight between Bane and Neo. Bane doing a tremendous Hugo oh, Weaving so good. impression. It's very Ian good. Bliss. Incredible. Yeah. That's that's an email I sent to myself to make sure I brought that up. No, that was another email I sent to you. <laughs> oh, no. I sent so many emails <laughs> saying so many insightful things <laughs> that maybe you'll mention. Maybe, yeah. And I'll jump on them. <laughs> so, but I think also it adds a level of vulnerability to Neo that we don't always see, especially when he's in the Matrix. Just being on that ship, being, you know, the real world, having an absolute horrendous moment. An absolute ball. <laughs> no, he's having a bad time oh. when he literally burns his eyes yeah. out of his head. The fact that they were bold enough to go, you know what, Keanu Reeves is a star of this film and he's a very handsome man, but let's just fucking fuse his face shut. Mm -hmm. That was one of the moments that really stuck with me of this film of like, oh my God, he's like the main character. He's not a bad guy. It's not like an Anakin Skywalker situation. Yeah, yeah. You've maimed this dude like horribly. And also in a lot, in, in some ways that sort of, Sort of closes the door on the series in some ways, like I in, guess. like in, a, in like in, a, but in a, in the sense of like you know in a world of endless sequels and spin-offs and etc. Yeah, you go. This is going to be the last chapter because this guy yeah. ain't got no eyes no more. You could never make another The Matrix after this. Mm -hmm. That's right, isn't it? That's right. But can you imagine like they burnt out Luke Skywalker's eyes or Tony Stark's Chopped eyes? Chopped his hand off. Or, Can't I mean, that's that. not the same. Mm. It's not the same. Anyway, that trip they do into the, the Machine City. Imagine if they burned out Daredevil's eyes. That's not, again, it's not the same, Mason. <laughs> His eyes aren't horribly fused shut. You're right, he's very And you handsome. can see like the, like the weird pus and goo in it. Mm. It's awful. Mm. And I love it. <laughs> um, but no, I enjoy the trip into Machine City and that burst through the clouds. I mean, it does make you wonder um, why the machines wouldn't just... I mean, if you can reach the clouds where the sun is... <laughs> And they're solar powered. Yeah. Why you wouldn't? Or send up a big pole yeah. with a solar panel on it. I don't know. I think they just like having people in yeah, just batteries like, and stuff. I reckon they just like having people around. <laughs> yeah, you know, they, they just miss that. In fact, if the movie had gone 10 more minutes, I reckon the machines would have been like, yeah, we just like having you around. I mean, they could have not put. Just wanted one more look at you. <laughs> <laughs> I just, I, I don't know. I mean, why would they even invent the Matrix? You could just keep people in comas. But yes. I guess maybe they figured out that you get more battery out of a person look I, yeah active. but i also think i i also yeah. think that you know in in the innumerable drafts of the matrix and 
you know, in interviews with the Wachowskis and et cetera. I think, yeah. uh, and it's supplementary material. Is it I think revenge and human suffering as well? Yeah, maybe of some of that, but also, you know, they're using it for processing power or something like oh, that. Okay, sure. So, yeah, fair enough. But Morpheus is probably just wrong. Yeah. Mm. Well, he's his. And it's also like it's really dramatic and interesting to be like, they've turned us into this and show a battery. Yeah. As opposed to like, they turn us into this algorithm here. So I've printed it off on... <laughs> 100,000 pieces of dot <laughs> matrix printer paper. We're not in the matrix either. I literally printed this off. Yeah, this, this is, is the real world. This is, I mean, we're supposed to be running a paperless office here. And <laughs> they'll have, they'll have, they'll, they'll be held to pay from the office manager. I tell you what, but I like to, I like my props. I tell you what, I'm Morpheus. Uh, anyway, Trinity dies. Yep. And I think it's a really great and touching moment. And I think it's like, it's sad to see her go. It's good that she got that moment to say goodbye after getting that bullet pulled out of her guts or whatever happened yeah, yeah, in the yeah. previous movie. But I just think it's a great lesson for Neo in terms of, and it's a great realisation for the audience that, yeah, he's flawed and he can't do everything. Mm-hmm. You know, he's he has his limits because obviously there is that problem again at, by the end of the first Matrix that this guy can do anything, I guess. Yeah, uh-huh. One of the things that I like about the Matrix sequels is all the interesting ideas yeah. that uh, are brought to the table, one of which is that we see right at the start of the third movie, which is that if, if you have enough power and influence in the world of the Matrix, you can build your own realities. You Like, you can build a train station where you are kind of a god and where the, the rules do not apply to you and you can beat... You're, and you're in two of the Mad Max movies. Yes, exactly. Yeah, 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 yeah. And you can you can kind of, you know, even though Neo is a is a is a godlike being, you can defeat him in this yeah. in this scenario. I mean, it is slightly undercut by the fact that in like the very next scene, the heroes go to the Merovingians club where he he's built a like a, a club where the rules of physics don't apply. Yeah. And yet someone can still just shoot him in the head. <laughs> you you probably you probably Switch that off. Switch that switch off, you know? Go into settings and be like, can't shoot me in the head. If you're French. Gravity off, shooting me also off. (laughs) Wife, sexy. Yeah. Sexy slider all the way up. Do I want her to say anything in this movie? Not really, apparently. Mute. (laughs) Put the wife on mute. Am I right, fellas? Well, he's got to be back, that guy. Who hates their wives? (laughs) I'm one of those guys. I'm married, but I hate it. I'm that guy. Oh, bloody ball. I'm down at the pub, but I'm pretending I'm still at work. Look at me. But speaking of the new one, mm-hmm. with Trinity being like definitively dead, yep. I do wonder whether any of the returning characters are going to be digitized versions. Either they've had their conscious uploaded to the Matrix whilst their physical body has been destroyed. Yeah. I think that's more likely with her than Neo. But, like, I wonder whether she's just a program running in the new Matrix. Anyway, we'll see, I guess, won't we? We sure will. Anyways, the end fight. Another thing that I never used to really like, but looking back at it and the way that it's set up and the revolution, resolution, it makes sense that they'd first of all be evenly matched because Smith can see the future, but at the same time, Neo was probably more powerful so he can't block everything. Mm -hmm. Another thing from this is, this is the movie that made Warner Brothers go, I reckon we can take another run at Superman. Like this was the moment. Really? Okay, it makes a lot of sense. Okay, sure. And the other thing is, this fight for Neo, it's just for show. He went into this Mm -hmm. knowing that he wasn't going to make it out, that he was just going to get assimilated by Smith. Mm -hmm. But of course, he can't just go in and go, just assimilate me, make it happen. He's like, I'll make, you know, I'll (laughs) take- You chicken, bet you won't. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) He's just putting on theatre for Smith, you know? That whole fight is, it's for nothing. He doesn't need to do it. It's ultimately a pointless fight. Do you know what I mean? The whole thing is to get Smith into the source Mm -hmm. of- the Matrix. Get him on the source. Get him on the source and, the, and then delete him. And I just think that's a very interesting conclusion. Yeah. Do you do get your big fist fight in the rain and whatever and everyone's screaming at each other about choice and <laughs> chance or whatever the fuck. But then at the end, you know. <laughs> They're just both very hard of hearing. <laughs> it's all about choice. What? What? Chance? No. <laughs> Ch- I mean, yes. No, maybe. <laughs> Apparently that scene was like in the pit was excruciating to film because there's just tons of water pouring in Mm -hmm. and then having to pour out at the bottom and they're in wet, heavy clothes, just kicking each other in the mud. Just awful. But anyway, Neo's Jesus or whatever and they chuck him in a drawer for later, for a later movie. Sure do. I never thought he was dead. And I think this also speaks to the world post the matrix oh yeah which i sent you an email about yes about what happens in the world oh, no. post the matrix and you're going to break it down for us right now but then i you? sent it no i don't know so it in 2000 
2005 to maybe like 2009, yep. we got The Matrix Online, which was a massively multiplayer online role-playing game, mm-hmm. which continued the story of The Matrix and for a long time I think was considered by the Wachowskis and some of the other writers and producers of these movies to be canonical. Yeah. So it re- I think it still is. Well, here's the thing. So, mm. for example, in The Matrix Online, there was a storyline in which Morpheus is assassinated, which may explain why Lawrence Fishburne has not been on the cast list for The Matrix 4. Or mm. they didn't ask him. I think... It- or maybe he <laughs> is in it, but it's a secret. It could be that also. I believe, though, in that game, it was revealed that he wasn't assassinated. Oh, what? At some point. Oh! So in that game, isn't it set up where... This is what I sent you. That <laughs> the the war starts up again. Yeah. And fairly a, quickly. Yeah, and there's a, but there's also even more factions. There's the humans. Yep. There's the machines. There's the cypherites who were like... They want to stay in the Matrix. Yeah, they, they, they were released from the Matrix, but they're like, this sucks, actually. We would rather go back into the Matrix yep. and eat, you know, uh, medium-rare steaks. Yep. All the time. That's definitely going to happen. You're definitely not going to just recycle us. <laughs> Please do that. There was also a group headed by the Merovingian, as we've previously mentioned, so all the, the ghosts and the vampires and the werewolves and etc. There was also, towards the end of the game, a small group called the Oligarchs, who were humans that had, prior to the war between humanity and machines had cut a deal with the machines to be cut out of the war. They were separate from the rest of humanity on Earth yeah. and they gained like special in the Matrix privileges so they could appear in the Matrix and they had sort of godlike powers. And here's the thing. They had loot boxes. They had loot boxes, <laughs> exactly. But because it had been hundreds of years since the downfall of humanity, their physical bodies had all withered away so they were only like machine consciousnesses. Right, okay. So their goal was to use the machine's technology to create human DNA that was in, like, perfect synchronicity with machine code so they could use it to transfer their consciousness into new human bodies. And the pinnacle of that technology was Neo. So the idea was the equation that the architect could never fully solve was in there because these oligarchs had put it in there and they were attempting to to become human Mm. again. I guess that's also something that Smith achieved. Because he managed to put yeah, his he mind did. in Yeah, he did, yeah, yeah. So maybe it was a combination of those things. Also, in The Matrix Online, we saw the arrival of a character named Sarah Edmonton, mm. which, James, your, your, your brain is operating in a flurry of activity. You've already figured out that that's an anagram of Thomas Anderson ah. and that maybe Neo was, in fact, not dead but had reincarnated in The Matrix as a woman. Right. Oh, really? That Well, that re- that's really interesting. Yeah. That ties into, like... A lot of the, you know, the trans themes of the Matrix and we are not qualified to talk about. No. But there is a great video from the YouTube channel Curio, which is called uh, The Matrix Sequels Are Good, Actually, oh. which covers that very thoroughly and is a very good video. Terrific. Yeah. Yeah, so I think it's really interesting as well that a lot of, well, some of the storyline of The Matrix online was that there is some version of Neo alive. Mm. It could be this woman. It could be that they've got him held hostage and they're keeping him in the machine city. Just want another look at him. Just want to just, just, every now and then they pull open that drawer and go, yeah, he's still there. We got him. <laughs> we got this him. guy's eyes. Yeah. Awful. <laughs> Should we put some of those open eye glasses on him? <laughs> we, put some, we could stick some googly eyes on yeah, him. Yeah, googly eyes. But I think some of this is going to tie into the new movie. I think it's yep. all mm-hmm. canon at the moment for The Matrix. Yeah. You know I mean, they've never really thrown away any of it. Agreed. You know, and there's not, on the whole... It's not like Star Wars or, or Marvel or DC where the canon just goes on forever. Mm-hmm, yeah, There's it's like true. a, you know, it's pretty contained at this point. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Anyway, do you know what it's time for? What's it time for? First of all, they cancelled that game because no one liked it or no one. No, people liked it, but nobody played it. Was that? I think accurate? so, yeah. Yeah. And I think it did end with like a big, like, real life server crash. Ah. Like everybody got together for the big final battle and it was just like. <laughs> Up and people were like, man, this was immersive. <laughs> Just like the Matrix would. <laughs> it bricked my computer. <laughs> it bricked my iMac. Do you know what it's time for, though? Is it time for Matrix VR? It certainly Revolutions. Is yes, that's right. Nice. Uh, the street corner where Neo and Smith fight in the crater is the same corner from which Neo made his phone call at the end of the Matrix. Oh. So there you go. There you go. Uh, the late Gloria Foster and her replacement, Margaret Alice, had played sisters in a long running Broadway play. So there you go. That's something that casting director uh, Marley Finn remembered oh. when she was looking around for a replacement. So that's that's a nice little nod. So the term VDTs is mentioned in relation to Bane's self-inflicted cuts. This guy's got VDTs. What's that? I don't know. Some kind of weird matrix sex disease, potentially. <laughs> no. Right. Uh, it's virtual delirium. Yeah, sex with a woman in the red dress. <laughs> that's what you get. <laughs> it's a virtual delirium. Hmm. So the idea is that 
it's the absence and or withdrawal from the matrix. Yeah. So that's what that brings about, you know? Okay, all right. It's like the Benz, sure. the album. <laughs> Love that album. It's a good album. I don't know. You don't know. I just You're don't know. You're not going to have an opinion on the Radiohead album, The Ben. I don't. Wow. What, do you want me to make something up? Yeah. I fucking hate it, all right? Wow, controversial. <laughs> so but you like their later period works? I don't the know, more, Mason. More electronic stuff. I have no opinions on Radiohead. Oh. How do you feel about Tom York's solo album, The Eraser? Look, just because I'm a guy in my late 30s doesn't mean I have to give a shit about Radiohead, all right? No, you do. I've never it's cared about law. Radiohead. It's the law. <laughs> Though never mentioned by name. Uh, based on the information from the Animatrix, the machine city is actually called Zero One and is located uh, in Saudi Arabia. So that means that this, as well as Zion, the last human settlement, uh, would imply that most of the main action from the film franchise takes place in the Middle East. There you go. There All you right. go. Uh, in the Matrix, the human resistance reveal that they don't know what year it is, but it's closer to 2199 than 1999. Mm-hmm. But in the Matrix Reloaded, it's revealed that the resistance has been created and destroyed five times, each cycle lasting approximately a century, and therefore it is likely to be hundreds of years later than this. Whoa. Not that it matters, because what is years when everything is awful? Exactly. And like now. And here's what the <laughs> and here's what the baby from that Nirvana album cover looks like now. Feel old yet? <laughs> uh, and look, I just wanted to put this in because I want people to see the footage. So you know the slapping and punching sounds that we get from this yeah, yeah. iconic skin to skin action. Or mm-hmm. well, here's footage of two shirtless men doing jujitsu on each other, just slapping their bodies together to make these sounds a reality. So there you go. Send this to Joe Rogan. He'll fucking love it. Holy shit. Jamie, pull that video up. All right, Mason. Yes. It's box office time. Uh-oh. So this one cost $150 million, like the last one. Uh, it only made $427 million down from the $739. Ba-bow. I think, like, partially because people were a bit lukewarm going out of the last one. They didn't expect a man to sit down and explain the Matrix to them at the end. Did he change his haircut between Matrix Reloaded and Revolution? Well, you can do that, can't you? I think he did. <laughs> A computer is going to change his haircut? That woman changed her face, Mason. Mm. She's a different woman. Yeah, but he's an old man and he's definitely set in his ways. (laughs) He's not getting a haircut. That's a good point. But I think they should have waited a year, Mm. released a couple of video games and comic books and, you know, wait for the DVD sales to, like, go through. People get an appreciation for it, maybe. Ramp back up to it. I think two in a year kind of killed the gains on this. And if I know anything... It's that you should never lose your gains. You know what I mean? Keep grinding. Yeah, you know yeah, what I mean? Absolutely. 5 a.m. start. Yeah, yeah, You know, don't lose your gains from the bends. Go straight into OK Computer, you know? <laughs> I wouldn't know, Mason. I don't have you an opinion. Should, you know, you shouldn't. It's in your DNA. You know. <laughs> what if that's my ability in the Matrix? I can unlock that I have opinions about Radiohead. <laughs> that's it, yeah. Oh my God, I do know a lot about Radiohead. Mm-hmm. And I hate him. I hate him, Mason. <laughs> Well, I feel like a right fool because yet again we have been drawn into the world of the Matrix. I asked you to build that railing for <laughs> occupational health and safety reasons and you didn't and we both happened to slip mm-hmm. on some data <laughs> and we and we fell into the Matrix again and I'm mad about it, quite frankly. Me too. Now, look, the last few weeks when we got pulled into the Matrix, <laughs> uh, those ones weren't my fault, I just want to stress. Uh, we, we were playing a section of the video game, right? Mm, that's we, right. We saw the Agent Smith versus Neo fight in the subway. We saw the Burly Brawl. And then I thought, well, we have to do something from the third movie. Mm-hmm. But here's the thing. The third movie, the only aspect of it that makes it into the game is the final boss battle, right? Another Neo versus Agent Smith? Yes. Spectacular. Now, wow. Well, okay, so prior to that, though, so we're not playing it, I'm just going to explain it. Okay, sure. So prior to that, there is an in-game cutscene where you see Neo fight Bane. Mm -hmm. And because it's done in-game, it looks as if they built that room so you'd have the fight yourself. Okay, But then you don't get to do it. Interesting. It skips over everything, and then you're in the rain, right? You're standing in the rain, and you're doing a little fisticuff in the street. You fly in the air, you're doing fisticuffs. The mechanics are all changed, so, like, it's not as fun anymore because you're not on the ground. You're just kind of drifting and spinning. So what you're saying is that the video game The Matrix Path of Neo looked at the third Matrix movie and went, probably do without most of this. (laughs) I mean, they could have done... You know, he was in the subway. He could have fought the, the train boss or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just, just elaborate a bit. Put in more giant ants. I don't there, know. There could have been a scene where someone tells him about the big mech battle <laughs> and you, you, you do quick time events to react to it. To, sure. Not the, the battle, but the storytelling. You're like, hmm, interesting. Wow. Hmm, go on. Wish I could have been there. And they all and they all rolled out little trolleys with bullets on them. <laughs> oh, 
Interesting. That's, that's really interesting. And they didn't, no one covered their faces. <laughs> no, no, no armor plating over there. No, none of that going oh, on. Okay. But then. Press X to question the designs of the mechs. <laughs> But then it gets to a point where the fight looks like it's wrapping up because you're in the pit, mm. right? You're having, a, you're having a bit of a mud wrestle all sure, around. Yeah, yeah. It's got one of my favourite moments in video game history, which I showed you where it's Agent Smith just... I don't know where he's staring. He's staring somewhere. He's staring at you, the player. With a big grimace. Please put it in full, Lawrence. And now we get what I consider to be a very good CGI cutscene, mm -hmm. which deviates wildly from the movie. Interesting, right? Where Agent Smith is formed, a giant Agent Smith from buildings and cars and pieces and all the different tiny Agent Smiths go together to make one giant like mecha. Yes, that's right. Like Stay Puft Marshmallow-sized Agent Smith. A real kaiju, an Agent Smith kaiju terrorising the city and you, Neo. <laughs> and he gets his sunglasses, which I know you appreciate. They're on a billboard <laughs> advertising sunglasses with big... No it's like a billboard out of like the 1960s Batman TV series. Absolutely. Just like, try some big sunglasses. <laughs> and the big Agent Smith is like, don't mind if I do. It's from there that you have a, a battle in the sky with Agent Smith. And it, what I don't like about a lot of boss battles in this falls into this it introduces new mechanics mm. which also aren't built on anything previously and aren't fun so it's like ducking his fists and then you fly through him and you do that 10 to 12 times right yeah because you don't what you want in a in a final boss battle is you go aha here's here's the boss battle and here's the skills that mm. i've learned and i can use them all I, he's, he's, there's the weak exactly. point and i'm going to use this skill and here's another weak point and i'm going to use this skill you don't want to be like jumping in with new mechanics i think the idea of it is quite cool and what if like neo also grew big and you had a sure, big like yeah. you had a kung fu battle in the city knocking down buildings yeah, or whatever okay. i think yeah because the idea was that they wanted to go ridiculous Anyway, so you, you eventually beat him. It's quite dull. Can I ask you this? Sure. Do you think it's better than what happened in the movie? <laughs> no, I do not at all. No, I don't. I mean, I understand why they wanted to change it, and we'll talk about why mm. they did that. But no, I think, like, thematically it's not as interesting. The way that it plays out is not as interesting. Mm -hmm. At the very end, you defeat him. It cuts back to Zion of the footage from the movie where it's the kid going, like, we did it! Mm. And then the song, We Are The Champions, the Adam Lambert original, <laughs> uh, no, the, the original Queen version plays. And then everybody in Zion cheers, and then the game finishes, and that's that's the game. Wow, and you right. might be like, why, why did they... Whose idea was this mm. and why? Who is responsible for this? <laughs> Who is going to be sent to video game jail for a while? I've left out a key bit of information here that uh, that you might not know, and that's that the Wachowskis were heavily involved in the making of this. And Written and directed by. Exactly. And so what happens just before the giant boss battle cutscene starts, mm -hmm. two 8-bit interpretations of the Wachowskis come out and they say, hey... They sit, wait, no, no, they sit in their little leather-back chairs. That's true. Like Morpheus would. And they say, hey, look... Remember how the Matrix ended like this and Neo returned to the source, etc. and so forth? That's not a fun video game ending, so we've just put in this ridiculous boss battle instead. See you later! Good luck! You'll need it. And enjoy enlightenment! <laughs> <laughs> and that's why this exists! Yeah! And, it, look, well done mm -hmm. on just being like, fuck it, whatever. Let's just yeah, do a sure. big boss battle. Just not very well executed, if I'm yeah, honest. Uh -huh. Very boring. And I think there's other stuff in that last movie that you could put in. Did you even find it boring at the time? Yes. Yeah, look, all in all, I think this game is quite good yeah. and fun. I mean, it's janky and it's clearly unfinished. <laughs> <You> know, <laughs> especially when they get to the third game. Yeah. But... I think if you can get it running or you can get a copy online, you know, and if you're a fan of The Matrix, it's worth checking out. And also, look, I know, you know, people have mentioned it and we have teased it. Here's some footage of me beating up some giant ants in a weird upside down parallel dimension universe level. Oh my God, they did get my lettuce. <laughs> <laughs> So, yeah, it's been great to get stuck in the Matrix. Mm. Hopefully next week we don't get stuck in the Matrix again. Yeah, especially if we're not talking about the Matrix anymore. <laughs> That's it. Whoa, we're coming out of the Matrix. Whoa, what a relief. The code's going up this time. It's Whoa. going backwards. Oh, no, now we're in the world of um, Gex. <laughs> sure. We're in the world of Gex. <laughs> hey, Gex, what's up? What's up, man? Looking good, Gex. Who made your little suit? <laughs> uh, anyways, I'm curious, though. First of all, what do people think about this trilogy in general and the way it wrapped up? Because I've definitely come around on this. I quite liked all of this coming back to it. Same. I think it's way better than I gave it credit for yeah. initially. They thought about this. <laughs> I mean, you know? 
<laughs> More than they thought about Speed Racer, am I right? People also like that. <laughs> no, they do. It's, ju- it's uh, just me, I think. Remember that time they made Hugh Grant Asian in that movie or whatever? Nope. Cloud Atlas? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Mm. I mean, some thought went to that as well, obviously. Very much so. Anyways, I'm curious, though, also if people want us to come back to cover Enter the Matrix and also The Animatrix. Yeah. Because Enter the Matrix is its own self-contained video story, and The Animatrix is obviously a series of vignettes, if you will. Yes. That kind oh, of I will, out, thank you. Thank you. That kind of flesh out the world. Uh, but look, if you do want to see any of our Caravan of Garbage videos early, like what we're doing next week, here's a hint. I mean, they might still delay that. We'll have to mm. see, but yeah, we may as well just do them. <laughs> We've got to fill some time, don't we? Mm, yeah, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, you can actually see all of these early every week over at bigsandwich.co, including some other bonus podcasts that we do, movie commentaries, our podcast, The Weekly Planet, where we talk movies and comics and TV shows. That comes out a day early on Sunday as opposed to Monday. If you want to check it out, or just check out the podcast at the regular time. It's got its own YouTube channel and all. Oh, my God. Thanks for watching this, though. I'm at Mr. Sunday Movies on Twitter. I'm at Wikipedia Brown on Twitter. Do you have opinions on Radiohead? Let us know in the comments. Mm. Which one's your favourite? You don't have to have an opinion either. That's right, but you should. <laughs> no. Look, look at yourself in the mirror. You're, you're, you're a white man in his 30s. You should. <laughs> you should think about it. All right, let's get out of here. <laughs> uh, grab that Jimmy, guys. We'll see you next week. Goodbye. I like the song Fake Plastic Trees. It's a good song. That's on the bends. That's all I have to say. Yeah. Oh, my God, my abilities are unlocking. <laughs> That's right. <laughs>